Bonjour à toutes et tous et, uh, et bienvenue pour Good cette morning uh, everybody uh, and thank you so much for having come to this uh, morning when we're going to exchange with each other we're going to work together and we're going to uh, talk to each other about confidentiality especially having to do with social media and I think that there are quite a few of you uh, who don't know me I'm Audrey Polvar I have been a political journalist in France for the last 25 years and for and for the last two and a half years I'm no longer working as a journalist I've been working on the environment on climate and uh, obviously that's not the topic for today but that's just to let you know what I've been doing and so let me just tell you I'm just telling you a bit about myself but it's not necessarily what we're talking about here today But I w am also continuing to talk about issues having to do with the media, which is why I'm here with you today. And so it's very difficult to make sure that you keep your credibility for people like you uh, who works here. And interesting, I just saw a squirrel outside the window. That was kind of cute. But anyway, it's a bit difficult for us and for you who work in communication professions to be shown in the media. And uh, obviously, this has always happened. We're not uh, seeing fake news for only three years. So it's been going on for ages. And uh, we've seen all sorts of different situations taking place. And so there, here now, we're looking at visual images and you need to see them in your head and you need to hear them from one language and put them into another and so this is our power this is the and this is actually the power of fake news as well because it just gets out there and it spreads and this disinformation is spreading and when there is false information that is being put out by a state, by a head of state, for example, to destabilize another country or to destabilize a, a company. This then has even greater consequences than, uh, say, just a competitor who might want to throw a wrench into your work. So this is something that is uh, something that has concerned me and it seems to me that the work of a journalist since i'm not an interpreter obviously i can only talk about my own uh, the most rigorous uh, journalism is what's necessary now so the more information we have the more real information we have uh, the more we are surrounded by information the more we need professionals who are ethically irreproachable, who will be able to show us the way through all of this information, who will be able to sort the false from the real, and who will be able to show us where the good sources of information are and be able to then allow us to develop our own conscience as a good citizen. And in this case, uh, we need to find journalists, for example, uh, who can be trusted. And we've been hearing quite often over the last few years that uh, journalism is disappearing, that anybody has a, a smartphone can start reporting on the facts. But here what we have to do is uh, not just, it's not just posting images on social media that makes you a journalist. You also have to explain what's going on in that image. You have to make sure that the person who receives that image is also able to make their own mind up about what they're seeing. And it has to be as unbiased as possible. Obviously, we all have some kind of a bias, but it has to be as unbiased as possible. And over the last few years, we've seen a very different relation to information because we have permanent access to information and it's very easy to get information. And so we have a very different relationship now with the truth. And this might be new. Maybe it's not completely new, 
But this idea of how public opinion now is related to the truth and what it feels about the truth is a bit new. So the institutions, the uh, scientists, various professions and so on, uh, a Nobel Prize winner for physics or chemistry who who talks. I mean, this these people are no longer trusted. They are all now being interpreted by uh, people through different prisms. And so therefore, there is a, a lack of factfulness. So it could be uh, a president in the United States or a president in Brazil can uh, then look at all of the scientific research that's out there and all of the studies and undermine them and basically say, no, it's not true. So, for example, the climate experts who are being saying that we've been having a climate uh, change and, and it's a disaster, but at the head of the largest country in the world is saying, no, no, that's not valid. It's not valid information. And so, therefore, uh, it, we don't have to pay any attention to this. And so then we see thousands of sites and maybe even tens of thousands of sites. They can then say uh, why, they all come out of the woodwork saying why these scientists are wrong. And so what can we do when we are in media and communication to make sure that people understand that we are credible and to bring in as much trust as possible from the people who read us or see us. So we need to see a permanent ethical behavior. We have to always ask ourselves, are our ethics irreproachable? Uh, if if uh, I felt that all of the journalists uh, did have irreproachable uh, ethics, then I would still be a journalist because I would be completely comfortable in that profession. But that's one of the reasons I left. But it seems to me that for interpreters, there's also that when uh, people can try and question what you're doing. And so when I, pre when I was preparing all of this and I was reading documents about uh, uh, interpreters can play a huge role uh, in uh, conflicts that are well beyond your, your purview, but that you can be blamed for some of this as well. But this personal ethics, that is your principal guarantee. That is your shield. And that is what protects you from others, not because this moral stance or these ethics are going to make you invulnerable, but because it will allow you to resist this internally. And it will allow you to stand up to this. And you know that you are in line with your values, with your profession, and in line with the reasons for why you're doing this. And so uh, we are in a world today, once again, uh, where if we can uh, doubt the work of experts, then any of us can be put into doubt. And so each of us could or could not, if they don't, could personally at least be comforted in the fact that their ethics are irreproachable. And every day we ask ourselves, have I done my job well today? Have I worked in accordance with my principles? Have I done the best work possible? I'm not perfect, but at least I tried to be. And so I can't reproach myself for that, and so I don't mind what anybody else says. So we'll be talking to the